White Line is America's only privately owned and operated passenger railroad. It currently connects Miami, Fort Lauderdale, and West Palm Beach in Florida. But soon the Orlando leg will come online with a train station there just unveiled today. Earlier, I spoke with Brightline Chairman Wes Edens, who is also the co-founder of Fortress Investment Group and the founder of New Fortress Energy. He said he expects to begin passenger service between Orlando and Miami this summer. And I asked him how ridership and pricing for the parts of the railroad that are open has been going so far, especially coming out of the pandemic. Have a listen. Um, a year ago, we did about 70,000 rides in March. This year, we do about 170,000. So yeah, the uptick has been tremendous. And a uh, big milestone for us, uh, the first month we actually made money on operating basis was March. So we never really intended to make money on that segment on a standalone basis. So to do so well and be profitable is amazing. But the real, the real uh, you know, uh, focus for us is getting to Orlando. We think connecting Miami, Orlando, that's, that's the, the goal of these inner city uh, uh, rail businesses. And so that's going to happen here in just a few short months. How are you going to take this business model and, and expand it to Brightline West uh, as that goes through yeah. regulatory approvals and begins to, to get built as well? Yes. Yeah, so Brightline West has been a project that's been in the work for a long time. And it is really um, at, the, at the last uh, you know, phase of it right now. And we expect to break ground on it you know, sometime later this year. So when you look at the, uh, the rail pairs, the city pairs that make the most sense, it's two big metropolitan areas uh, that have got lots of travel between them uh, that are a couple hundred miles apart. So the kind of too far to uh, drive, too short to fly is what we say. Uh, Vegas, LA is probably the best rail system in the world that doesn't exist. So you know, we've got 100% of the right of way. Uh, we have all the permits that we need to start uh, work finalizing up our final construction contracts and financing. And so this thing is just about ready to go. Yeah, and that's a $10.5 billion project. You, you recently applied for a grant, I think, of up to $3.75 billion to, to start the funding process for Brightline West. I guess walk me through that process and how it speaks to the government dollars that are now flowing into more infrastructure projects and possibilities. Yeah, the big numbers on the Brightline West. So the actual project in total, including financing and soft costs, is about $12 billion. Uh, we applied for $3.75 billion. That application goes in actually officially tomorrow. It's uh, 4,300 pages long, so it'll take a little while to get through it. But we think that, uh, number one, it is the by far the most advanced uh, high-speed rail project in the country. You know, a little uh, contrast. China has 26,000 miles of high-speed rail. Uh, in the United States, we have zero. That's just not right, right? So this will be the beginning of the uh, the high-speed rail industry as well as just the project itself. And so we think American-made, union-built, you know, trains made in America, you know, all those things are good. And of course, the uh, the two catchwords for it is both green and it's safe. Uh, we've spent about $600 million thus far, uh, Morgan, just to get to the starting line. So it's kind of a, a crazy uh, commitment that we've had to get here. But we are, we know we are the best project uh, in the country at the right place at the right time. And we think partnering with the government creates a real blueprint then for how we can do this all over the country. So this is uh, it's a big moment for us, but we think it's really now the beginning of the next phase of our, our development. Mm. You've been hearing so much talk that you're starting to see uh, a seizing up uh, of credit availability in general right now, particularly uh, in the wake of the SVB collapse. And just want to get your sense of what the climate is like out there right now. Well, I think, you know, uh, these financial crises tend to happen periodically. I've been around long enough to have seen a few of them happen. I think the good news is the banking system itself appears to me to be in very good shape. Um, that, you know, having said that, though, there's definitely going to be a move of deposits, a move of assets to the money center banks, and there's an inevitable contraction of credit that's going to happen as part of that. Um, I think that plus uncertainty on the economy creates a more challenging financing environment. But there's no doubt that you can get financing for the right projects that have got you know, the underpinnings and the viability uh, that, that are necessary. And we think our training in, in, uh, in Vegas, L.A. is certainly on that list. So it's, uh, it's a tougher environment, but, but it's one that is very actionable still right now.